Hello and welcome to St John the Baptist for our worship on the 13th Sunday of the Trinity. Our lives are experiencing so much change at the moment. So more than ever, let's remember to rest upon the eternal changelessness of our Heavenly Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's say our prayer of approach together. Almighty God, you lead us and guide us as we journey towards you. Help us to keep you always in our sight so that we don't lose our way. Amen. Let's sing our first hymn. pause in silence before our prayer of confession. God the Father, we confess our love for you because of your wondrous creation. Yet we have wasted your gifts. God the Son, we confess our love for you because you died for us. Yet we have not put others first. God the Holy Spirit, we confess our love for you because of the gifts you give us. Yet we have been selfish and self-seeking. God, we praise you. Forgive our weakness. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness, now and in all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's time for our first reading. A reading from the prophecy of Ezekiel. So you, mortal. I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity. But their blood I will require at your hand, but if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked shall turn from their ways and live. Turn back, 
Turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I pray that I may speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may have heard the story about how a copy of Darwin's Origin of Species fell into the orangutan enclosure at the zoo. One orangutan picked it up and after studying it for a while, turned to his friend and said, So, I am my keeper's brother. The humour in this relies on the verse in Genesis chapter 4, where in reply to God's question to Cain about Abel, Cain replies, Am I my brother's keeper? I'd like to use this verse from Genesis as a peg to hang our thoughts on as we look at this morning's Bible passages. There is a theme running through them, touching on the responsibility for one another of those who are drawn close to God. I'm never likely to appear on MasterChef, but can put together a reasonable meal for the family. The task of a chef is to take ingredients which, in their raw state, may be indigestible and to make something of them which is suitable for the intended recipients. The task of a preacher is similar, to take something which may be a bit difficult to swallow and make it into something suitable for absorption by the intended hearers. This morning's passages are at first, first sight perhaps indigestible to our 21st century thinking, so hopefully I can cook up something you will be able to digest. Ezekiel, in common with many of the prophets of old, did not volunteer for the job. In the early chapters of Ezekiel we find him drawn in close to God, catching a glimpse of his glory and finding himself commissioned as a kind of watchman for the nation. God says to him in our reading today, I have made you a sentinel for the house of Israel. A town sentinel or watchman's duty was to watch for approaching danger and warn the people of the town to take appropriate action. As watchman over the nation, he was commissioned to warn the people to turn from their disregard of God's law and keep within the covenant relationship established since the time of Moses. Note that his responsibility was to speak and not to enforce the desired repentance. God's desire was not to exact punishment, but that the relationship should be restored. Forgiveness is on offer. But Ezekiel's responsibility ends with the announcement of its availability. The law, as given through Moses, was not limited to the nation's relationship with God, but extended to their national life and its government, their relationships with one another, and the use of the land's resources. As those who are drawn close to God, and if we seek to be followers of Jesus Christ, then we have been so drawn we find ourselves given a similar commission to that of the prophets. We are our brother's keeper. The Church of Christ has an obligation to speak out against injustice, abuse, wasteful use of the world's resources, and anything that is not in tune with the values of the Kingdom of God, which we are constantly praying may be established on earth. Restoration is on offer. God wills it and urges us to announce that a different way is possible and to speak and to work for it. The COVID-9 pandemic has shown us that political and economic structures of the world are fragile and vulnerable because they depend on exploitation and competition rather than sharing and compassion. We should pray that the new normal 
that emerges will be more in tune with the kingdom of God. God says to Ezekiel that he has no pleasure in destruction but desires the world to thrive. There is a similar theme underlying our passage from Matthew's Gospel. At first sight we should perhaps expect to see this kind of teaching from St Paul later in the life of the early church. There is a hint of a similar idea in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 4. However, this is Jesus' teaching and he refers to church. How are we to understand this? Jesus and his followers would have known of communities like the one at Qumran, sects within the Jewish faith seeking purity of living according to the law. Such communities needed a means of disciplining members who fell short of their community standards and this three-step approach is found in the Manual of Discipline at Qumran. The idea of witnesses to ensure fairness is found as far back as Deuteronomy chapter 19. The three-stage process of attempting reconciliation borrowed from the ideas of closed communities like Qumran understand our, under, underlines our responsibility being drawn close to God our being concerned about one another. Everything that can be done to prevent losing one of their members should be attempted and dismissing someone is a last resort. We tend not to think of disciplinary procedures in the church. This is perhaps an outmoded concept but there are some churches where such concepts are in place. This concept of days of obligation the Roman Catholic Church may be, could be perceived to have a remnant of this. Rather, we would want to consider the Church as somewhere we can be loved and accepted regardless of who and what we are. The fact that Jesus tells them to treat the excommunicated one like a Gentile or tax collector seems odd, as he often uses them as examples of faith to put to shame the self-righteousness of the Pharisees. He is using the familiar language of the day to emphasise the importance of finding a means of reconciling differences. The talk of binding and loosing, similar to Jesus' conversation with Peter in Matthew 16, is about granting or withholding forgiveness. Whereas in Matthew 16 it is addressed only to Peter, here it is addressed to all the disciples, implying that the responsibility or privilege of forgiving is for all members to one another. In reference to the second stage of the reconciliation process, Jesus says that where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there also. The implication is that he is to be involved in the process. It is to be done prayerfully and not judgmentally. Jesus' assertion that if two of us agree on something, it would be done for us by our Heavenly Father, needs to be understood in the context of Jesus being present and that prayer of this kind is to be seen not as a shopping list of what we want, but as a desire to align ourselves with God's purposes and the values of the Kingdom of Heaven. The talk of discipline and excommunication seems rather heavy, it is not easy for us to take on board. Jesus has once again been using extreme language to emphasise his point. Matthew's Gospel continues, as it will be in our reading next week, with Peter seeking to unpack the idea of trying to be reconciled with someone who has offended us. Referring back to Jesus' mention of one member sinning against him, he asks whether the three-stage process should begin immediately or should he seek to forgive the person first, first before going to the next step. Should it be as much as seven times? No, Jesus replies, much more. Depending on which translation you read, Jesus says 77 or maybe even 70 times seven. Whichever of those you accept, it is clear that forgiveness is at the heart of the values of the Kingdom of God. Rather like we saw in Ezekiel, God desires repentance that he may grant forgiveness. The three-stage process of reconciliation is intended to give every opportunity for peace in the community. If that can be achieved in the Church, we have a valid model to offer the world. We have been drawn close to God are called to bear responsibility for one another and the world in which we live. We are called to announce the availability of God's reconciling love. Just as Ezekiel was called to announce God's judgment was not responsible for the response, we are not responsible for the response of those who hear. It is the work of the Holy Spirit 
to convict people of their need for God's love. Let us pray that the ground into which we sow the seed will be fertile. Genesis 4 verse 9 Where is your brother Abel? I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts by faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Gospel reading today encourages us to discern the way to resolve conflict and bring peace to broken relationships. In our prayers today, in times of silence, you may find it helpful to look at the images on the screen, as together we reflect on the difficulties in relationships in our world, close to home and far away. So let us pray. As we give thanks to God for family and friends, let us bring to him any areas of conflict or broken relationships. Let us think of those who have died recently, Sylvia Moss, Dorothy Hunt and Anne Dickerson. And remember those whose anniversaries fall at this time. June Thompson, Vivian Cook and Graham Harvey. Let us pray that their families and friends may be able to support one another in their memories and grief. We pray too for all who are unwell those named on our church prayer list and others known to us. Let us pray for NHS workers, care and nursing home staff and residents, and for those at more senior levels with the responsibility for the care of those in need throughout the UK. Father, give them all wisdom, patience and the willingness to discern the best way forward, regardless of their own personal ideas. At this time especially, let us pray for all involved locally in education, children, parents, teachers, support staff, as well as those in local and national government, tasked with implementing guidelines. Father, give them all a shared vision of your way forward for all our young people. Let us think too of young people worldwide coping with interrupted education and especially today we are asked to pray for the organisation 28 Too Many seeking to end female genital mutilation among young girls in many countries. Let us pray for those working to bring an end to this practice. As we give thanks for each other within our local church family, let us pray for all dealing with the complexities of repairing and reordering our church building since the fire and in these ongoing difficult times. 
Father, we pray for patience and wisdom to discern your plans for our future ministry. Let us give thanks to for the support of our fellow Christians in the Royston area and pray for them wherever they worship. Today we are asked especially to pray for those at Thurfield Chapel and their pastor Joshua Jones. Much further afield, we are asked to pray for Christians in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Nigeria and West Africa. Here, as in many parts of Africa, persecution for being Christian is a daily reality. So let us pray for such conflicts to be resolved and for Jesus' peace to be experienced. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy, in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and the fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood, gifts from God to his table we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Pour upon the poverty of our love and the weakness of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home, to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest.
Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ, with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we, and all who share this food, offer ourselves to live for you, and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. God, our creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's say the sending out prayer together. Lord Jesus, just as you called your first disciples, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Christ the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Let's sing our final hymn. 